Nimish Kampani joins us of Less Venture. Let's take our conversation forward. Nimish, fantastic to have you on ET Now. Thank you for joining us. It's a lovely coincidence that five unicorns have taken birth in India, Indian startup space this year. Is this just a coincidence or it is an indication of what lies ahead? So thanks, thanks, Nikud, for having me on the show. And uh, yes, I think what we have seen in the uh, last quarter of today is that we have got uh, uh, already 10 unicorns uh, coming up in India. Uh, compared to the entire last year where, where we had 11 unicorns. Uh, and I think the biggest factor uh, why you're seeing this kind of movement is obviously uh, the entire behavior change that has been caused by the pandemic, right? I think uh, a lot of businesses have moved on to uh, the digital platform and I think a lot of consumers have moved on to the digital platform. And that's where I think uh, you are seeing uh, uh, the startups growing at a very fast pace, yeah? Not only unicorns, but I think the overall funding has also been pretty pretty robust in the first quarter where you had uh, 2.7 million dollar funding rounds happening uh, across the spectrum, right? So I think for me, uh, it's not only the top 43, 45 companies uh, who are unicorns, but I'm closely also watching the next 650 companies, right? Uh, where you have huge opportunity for having uh, unicorns come out of that. Okay. Nimish, uh, let's look at the breakup of uh, the fundraising or the so-called uh, you know, unicorn uh, birth has taken. Why is it still restricted to some would say the SaaS or the IT tech or the tech enabling services? Why is that we are not seeing anything outside that so far? I think it's it's the opportunity, right? Uh, when a company is getting funded and becomes a unicorn, uh, it's the opportunity that is seen, and and the opportunity in India is vast, right? I think uh, if you just look at some of the unicorns that are funded, uh, some of the large ones are yet uh, to go all across India, right? They are largely focused on urban areas. You know, you take the food delivery apps, you take some of those. Uh, some of the fintechs have gone beyond that, gone to Bharat. Uh, EdTech is in Bharat, so I think. The opportunity set that India offers is huge and uh, I think the difference here, uh, I'll just point out from public investing is that in public markets you look at the next one year, uh, look at how the company is going to perform, it's already a mature company. Uh, in case of startups, I think what you're looking at is, is the, uh, the horizon of three to five years and what is the opportunity set that the company is going to deliver in, right? So if I were to just uh, uh, yeah, that's that's the primary comparison, right? And and uh, when a, when a, uh, when it becomes a unicorn, it's primary uh, validation that the product market fit is right, uh, execution has been pretty good, and that's why this company has a potential uh, to grow much higher, much faster, and become a sustainable business, and with obviously profitability coming in as we speak. You know, I was just going to ask you about that, Nimesh, the fact that a lot of these companies are loss making and um, it's, you know, the SEBI rules currently make it uh, quite challenging for them to list on the bourses. What are some of the options around it? We were discussing the SPAC route with or the SPAC route with some uh, some experts, uh, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, uh, you know, but are there other incentives to ensure that uh, that these companies look to Indian bourses uh, when they do decide to list? <laughs> That's a very good point you made there. I think, see, if you look at it, uh, uh, also look at the investor side of things, right? The evolution of the uh, investor in India in private markets is still at a pretty nascent stage. Right? It has come ahead from what it was a few years back, where it was only LP investment, but now a large family offices, ultra HMIs are moving towards direct investment. But when you compare that to the US, uh, uh, US is a very mature market when it comes to investment in startups. So of course, there is a lot of motivation, there is a lot of uh, 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 thinking that a founder goes through where he would get full value if you were to you know, list outside India. Uh, there are a lot of uh, incentives, benefits available. Uh, the investor base is very different. Uh, uh, so I think some of the incentives are, are those that work in that favor. Uh, but having said that, I think uh, uh, India will get there. We, we take some time. Obviously, the regulatory environment will start becoming conducive. You, you have seen that with the setting up the IGP. Uh, you've seen that with relaxation. Again, uh, many of these companies will like to come on the main board. 
so you'll see a mix of both, but but yes, I think as we stand today, large part of them are moving towards uh, a SPAC route or a US listing, uh, primarily because the market depth is very huge there. Uh, investor base is, is is very huge, as well as the valuations they would give. They would understand the long-term theory, as I mentioned, right? It, it's not a short-term one or two-year thinking that goes in when you are investing in a startup. It's more about a three to five-year journey, and people are really thinking long-term uh, uh, as the business matures. So I think that is one of the primary reason. Uh, having said that, I think unicorn is just just the beginning, right? I just wanted to put that out there. It's it's just like if I were to draw a corollary, it's like your uh, second session of the first day of the test match, right? Reaching a unicorn status is not end of it all. I think that's when the real journey begins. Uh, the company has to become sustainable. The company has to show growth uh, and obviously work towards profitability. Because uh, if you look at our Indian uh, public publicly listed companies, your primary driver is always price to equity ratio, right? And when uh, a lot of traditional investors shy away from companies, you know, which would be loss making, when you go at large scale, I so I think that mindset is changing, but I think we are a little still away. I personally would want a lot of domestic capital participating in this because I think the next decade is for India when it comes to private markets. A large amount of wealth creation will happen in private markets, uh, uh, be it through you know IPOs or SPAC listing or any of those modes that are available out there. Uh, personally, would want uh, a lot more domestic capital to participate in that. Absolutely. Um, okay. You know, in terms of uh, some of the, you know, some of the unicorns that we've we've had, there's Grow, of course. The stock market has been heating up. We've been talking about that, and we've seen, you know, competition from the likes of Azeroda, Paytm, Money in Money, uh, you know, for something like a Grow. So there's actually lots that's heating up in that particular segment. Just want to get your perspective on it and the kind of opportunity or scale you see in that segment. Uh, you know, what, how you see this playing out? Tech uh, and financial services play, right, is, is always one of the most difficult businesses to be in, right? So the first more advantage is always there. Uh, the person who comes in first really, really is, is able to capture a lot of market, and especially when you are B2C. Uh, and, and it becomes more and more difficult to acquire customers as we go forward. And, and that's why I think the comparison between Zero and Grow is not fair. Uh, because you know, obviously at the first more advantage to capture the market and obviously they're the, they're the largest player. Uh, but, uh, but having said that, I think India still has space for a few more. Uh, uh, you know, it's always always the opportunity there, uh, even if you were to do the same things. Uh, uh, so I think uh, I think for Grow, I think, I think the capital will help them to acquire more customers and, and obviously that will help them to, you know, sustainably grow as we see going forward. But yes, I think the fintech space there's especially a space uh, where I would say there's always space for three to five players at the top. Uh, it, 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 in India, I think it's not a winner deal all. So I think that's that's where I would say it's a very interesting development for growth that has happened. Also, uh, you know, just touching upon some of those global investment houses that have been perhaps uh, driving some of this momentum. And this week, in fact, Tigers invested uh, quite heavily in some of the names that we've heard uh, added to the unicorn list. Uh, uh, I mean, what do you make of make of that? I mean, are there um, is this a specifically aligned strategy? Do you think it's just an example of how global funds are heating up on India? Uh, you know, what would you take away from it? Just look at one data point I would suggest, right? If you look at it, India is third largest in the world in terms of the startup ecosystem, right? But what we have is just around 43 unicorns, right? Uh, even if you look at the total unicorns in the world, it's around 750. And uh, you have bulk of them from US and China. So we have a long way to go there, right? So, so the opportunity set there sitting is huge. We being just 5% of the ecosystem, I think uh, next few years, you are going to see that number in jump, right? Uh, second is, I think, uh, uh, of, of course, uh, when you look at all the leaders in India, I think Tiger has a very good strategy on, on you know, funding all the leaders in each of the niche space they are functioning in. Uh, and, and I think they, 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 Tiger, Falcon, and I think some of the names is what you would see common across the board. So obviously they're betting on the future. I think they're betting on the India story. Uh, uh, most of these companies, as I said, have just touched the tip of the iceberg. I think it's too early in their journey, so I think uh, quite a few of them 
would definitely deliver a, a, a lot better. Uh, and I think that that's one of the main reasons. Uh, India has been on the focus and on the radar because of the same reason. Now, if you just look at the US market, right, we are talking about uh, the six unicorns that have happened over the last four days in India. Uh, but just look at the US markets, right? They have two unicorns every day. The last quarter, they had two unicorns every day, right? So, so it's, a, it's a very normal thing for them. For us, it's, it's something that we are talking about a lot because we have seen this. This is something that we have never seen before or never heard before. And the liquidity, again, globally across uh, the venture funds is closer to, I think, they're sitting on around uh, four, $4 trillion, right? So that money has to be deployed. So opportunities in India, as I said, right, the next set of companies, which are all now, you are seeing some of them converting to unicorns, that 650 companies is where I will watch out for. I think uh, that's, that's what I recommend to investors. Look at good companies with more businesses there. Look at companies which have their product market fit right. Uh, uh, and that's where we also work on Let's Venture Plus, works on those opportunities. Uh, so, so I think that's where the next next wave will will come, and you will see a lot of money uh, coming in there. And I think new and new players are also coming. So I think Tiger Global has been there around for a very long time. Uh, uh, I think one of them also announced a couple of names which are only in the public listed space, also now looking at private uh, markets in India. So I think that's overall very good news for India. I would say.